Hey boys and girls, it's Tim, Big Dog Forge, and it's power hammer time again. Got an upcoming project. It's going to stress the power hammer to its limits. It's going to put it through a good test. So I'm going to do some upgrades, some enhancements to it. We're going to see how that works out, but I thought I'd take you along for the uh, ride here. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, what we got here is a piece of leaf spring. It's off a 1931 Ford Model AA one and a half ton truck. It's an overload spring. And we're going to cut it off actually at five inches. I marked it at four and three quarter, but I moved that to five later on. So the hammer is slightly smaller than the anvil portion of the railroad track on the power hammer. So I need to increase the face on the hammer to match the anvil. Let me give this thing a good flatten. We can anneal it here a little bit. And we'll wire brush it up real good. Get as much scale off as we can. This thing's rusted up pretty good. So after brushing it and heating it, we have to remark it. You can kind of see our line there, but uh, mark it at five inches. And we're going to take the big grinder to it, and get as much of that rust off as we can down to some clean steel. And like I said, this thing's going to take some abuse. So I uh, wanted a good strong piece of steel, and I figured this. Old spring steel is probably it. So over to the sander. Sand that thing down, round the corners off. Try to keep the sharp edges off the corners of that hammer so it doesn't leave square edge marks on things. Okay, so a nice shiny face and it matches the anvil. We're going to drop that hammer down and put that plate in between, keep it lined up. And we're going to weld that right to that piece of railroad track. And I cut out a bunch of this welding and grinding. I wanted a nice smooth area, so I laid several beads. Get the heat into that track and that spring, spring steel real good. So when this is all ground down, it'll have a flange shape to it, something I can build dies and slide over the end of this hammer and put a you know, lock bolt in, hold them in place. So that was part of the reason as well. So this project that we've got upcoming is um, going to put a lot of stress on this thing, but I need the full surface to make it work and it needed to be as flat as possible. So I thought this is the best way to achieve that. I didn't have a larger piece of railroad track to cut that one off and put a new one on, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, so after all the welding and grinding, there it is. And the upper half matches the lower half. So we're going to add some weight to the hammer. These weigh about a pound and a quarter a piece. They're five inches of one inch round stainless steel. It's a 308 stainless. We're going to weld those right in there just like that. And it should add about two and a half pounds of weight to the hammer, bringing it up to uh, almost 28 pounds from just a hair over 25. We're going to start there and see if we need to add more later. Let's see how this goes. And I didn't want these to fly off, so I welded them on the ends all the way around really well. And they did okay. But a little is good, but four are better. So we ended up adding a total of five pounds to our 25 and a half pound hammer plus about a half pound worth of welding rod and plate. So we ended up with about a 31 pound hammer. So now we've got a big hammer and we've got another five pounds on it. 
but we need to tension that spring a little bit. So didn't have a longer spring, so we cut a coil off another one, and we're going to add it to the end. Now my best guesstimation with my old rusty fish scale that I have pulling on that thing tells me we increased the weight of that spring by about you know, five to seven pounds, somewhere in there. Get that good and tight. And surprisingly, it did real well. So we're gonna give it a quick test. And this is gonna be the first stage of our little project we've got going. Now it's a three quarter inch square. I'm gonna take it down to a quarter inch square. See how well it does, and it did pretty good. So now we have a 30 pound hammer. We'll see how the rest of it holds up in our upcoming segment. So be sure to tune in to part two where we'll see if this thing can take all sorts of abuse. See what happens. All right guys, uh, for those of you who are interested in the power hammer, it's hitting a lot harder than it used to and we're gonna see how that thing holds up. I'm uh, kind of curious about those linear carriages and how they're gonna hold up. The bearings in those things are a little bit small, but uh, hey, we'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, we end up doing something else to it, but I think it'll be okay. And we're going to put it through some pretty heavy hammering and see how that goes. And upcoming projects kind of fun. I'm excited and uh, hope you'll tune in to see what's up. All right, guys. So take care. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Be safe. Bye.